Hi there, my name is Raj Pandya and I work for the American Geophysical Union, which is a professional society of earth and space scientists who study everything from the core of the earth to the surface of the sun. And my job there is to help connect our scientists with community leaders so they can do on the ground work that brings that science to bear on local issues. I am really excited to be part of this meeting and be part of this conversation. And I'm excited because I think this conversation is part of a conversation about um, new ways of doing science. And I think we're profoundly in need of new ways of doing science for, for three reasons. First, because we're facing really profound kinds of challenges, climate change, the pandemic, natural hazards, floods, hurricanes, um, wildfires, all of these things reveal sort of the increasing impact we're having on the planet and the increasing impact the planet is having on us. If we don't figure this out, we aren't gonna, we aren't gonna thrive in the future. And we will not figure this out by applying the same kinds of science that got us here to getting us out of here. So we need a new kind of science. Second reason we need a new kind of science is because everything I just talked about, climate change, pandemics, wildfires, they're all related. If you just take the example of wildfires, if you think about the wildfires in Colorado, it's not just a fire management problem. It's not just an insurance problem. It's not just a zoning problem. It's not just a behavior problem. It's not just a climate change problem. It's all of those problems intersected. And the way we've done science up to now is to take small pieces of the problem and try to solve them. We need an approach that takes a more systemic view, that gets at all of these things together and thinks about how these systems interrelate. Third reason I think we need a new approach to science is because we're finally starting to get that it's about equity and it's about justice. It always has been about that. And some people, mostly the people on the kind of the receiving end of inequity have known it's always been about that. But we're finally starting to see that that has a profound influence on the kinds of science we do, the way we do science, who benefits from science, who participates in science. Hurricanes are just one example of this. Take a natural hazard. It both exacerbates existing inequity and reveals that inequity and its impact. And I think science is finally starting to take that on. So for those three reasons, we need new approaches to science. We need something that better deals with the scale of problems that we have, better deals with the interconnections between science and other ways of knowing and within science, and better tackles the issues of equity and justice that are intimately related to our interaction with each other and, in, and with the natural world. The way I think, one of the ways that we can start to tackle this is through what I call community science. And, and the, the thing about community science is it's about not doing a bunch of science and then taking it out there and telling people about it and how they should use it and what it means in their daily lives or what it means in policy. It means sitting down with people in the places they live, the places they work, the places they play, the places they pray, and asking them about the things they care about, and then designing science together that addresses those things and and moves through all of the processes from formulating a science question all the way to applying it to specific instances in partnership and together and through a lens that's thinking about interconnections, that's thinking about relationships, and that's thinking about justice and equity. So community science. When I think about community science, I'm thinking about five key principles. The first principle is justice. Every community deserves the right to ask and answer their scientific questions. Unfortunately, not every community has that right. And so any approach to community science foregrounds those communities who have been historically denied the opportunity to participate in, to guide, and to benefit from science. This means fence lines communities. This means communities facing environmental justice. This means communities dealing with climate justice. This means communities that are disproportionately in being impacted by things like the pandemic. Those communities need to be our highest priority in working on science together that advances the priorities and the, and, and, and the opportunities for those communities. Second, community science begins with community priorities. It's never about scientists coming in and telling people what they should do. It's about sitting down with communities, finding out what they aspire to do, where they want to grow, and then thinking about the ways in which science can help advance that growth, help promote those aspirations. It's a very asset-based approach to doing science. It's also about community knowledges. One of the things that, that we see is that compartmentalized forms of 
of doing science or of applying science just don't work. We've got to get science embedded in a much larger context where it's sitting at the table with other ways of knowing, with values, with spirituality, with the ways people make decisions in everyday life, with the way policy is made. And science is a partner in those conversations, not a driver, but it's also not subordinate in those conversations. So it needs to honor and respect community knowledges and it needs to be honored and respected by community knowledges. And finally, community science is about getting things done. It's about not just understanding how the world works or how the natural system works, but using that understanding so that we can build better lives together for everyone on the planet, every being on the planet, and for the planet itself. And not just thinking about now, but thinking about the future and how the actions we take together impact not just each other, but generations to come. So that's the notion of community science. It's a notion of partnership between scientists and society where science isn't held up on a pedestal. It's not in an ivory tower, but it's part of the dynamic plaza of ideas where we figure out together how we do things. And justice becomes absolutely paramount in this because if we're thinking about the plaza of ideas, we've got to be thinking about who is invited into that plaza, who's allowed into that plaza, who helps design that plaza. Those are pieces. That's a fundamental part of community science. And I want to leave you with one last thought, which is sort of what I think about as the beauty and the hope of community science. It's easy as a scientist, as a physical scientist, to be discouraged about. It's easy as anybody to be discouraged about the state of the world today. We're having a profound impact on the planet. We're having a profound impact on each other. Things are kind of messed up. Um, community science asks us to flip that picture around. And instead of thinking about the impact we're having on the planet and the impact we're having each other, it asks us to think about the potential to work together. It's not 9 billion people on the planet trashing the planet. It's 9 billion minds, 9 billion partners in building a better and a more sustainable world, a world that's just, a world that's fair, a world that's resilient, a world where every person and every being has the opportunity to thrive. That's the idea of community science. And that's what I'd like to talk about in our small group discussions today. Thanks very much.